Amen. If you're in agreement, come on, let's just celebrate him for what he's going to say to us. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's begin from the book of Amos chapter 9, one verse, verse 14. Amos 9, verse 14. And it says, and I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. When I read that, I was really moved by how the author place certain words in this verse, certain words that jumped out at me, and hopefully they will also to you. Because he says, rebuild, then he talked about plant vineyards, then he said, drink their wine, and make their gardens and eat their fruit. All those things are positive things. All those things are things that all of us would desire. All of us desire to rebuild our lives. Because the truth is, most of us can honestly say we're not really where we should be. Regardless of what caused us to miss out on God and miss out on the opportunities uh, in life, most of us can honestly say we're, we're, we're not really where we should be because of life circumstances. You know, perhaps maybe family drama, maybe bad decisions that we have made. We're not our, at our best self. And all of us desire to rebuild our lives. It is our passion to be in the perfect will of God. It is our passion, according to the writer, to plant vineyards and to drink from those vineyards or to reap or to benefit from our planting. And then it is our desire to uh, make gardens, if you will, to live a life that causes us to flourish. Just because we're Christians doesn't mean our lives ought to be less than people who don't even believe in God. Where did we get this from? Where did we get this idea from? Just because we are Christians, we are to live this moderate, very conservative, there's that word, conservative, conservative lifestyle where we shouldn't want for anything good. We should just be very simple in life, just get by, just have enough, and our goal is to die and go to heaven and get our reward. That's it. We just want to live on this earth every day, walking around and telling people Jesus loves you, and if they don't receive Jesus, then you're quick to say, you're going to go to hell if you don't receive the Lord. So our passion is to walk around and, and, and instead of giving good news, a lot of times we're condemning people. And we're not living the life that Amos is talking about here that God wants to bring us from exile. God wants to bring us from a place that we've been robbed, a place that we've been deprived so that we can rebuild our lives. And he's speaking to a lot of us today. He wants you to rebuild your life. Forget the drama. Forget the issues that took place years ago. Forget all the battles you had to fight to get to where you are today. God really, truly wants you to rebuild your life. He wants to repair your life. He wants to give you a good reason to exist. He wants you to uh, plant vineyards. Back in those days, you know, they will um, take care of these wineries. You know, they'll plant the grapes and those grapes will turn into wine. 
and what the Word of God is saying, God's desire is for you to rebuild your lives and become productive. Please don't miss this. To become productive where you begin to plant your vineyards. And here's the amazing thing about it. God doesn't want you to die and just pass on the, the, the benefits of the vineyards to the next generation without you first enjoying it. <laughs> well, let's look at the scripture again. He said, they will build, they will build the ruined cities. He wants to rebuild, to rebuild your lives. And then he says, I want you to plant vineyards and to drink from it. Maybe nobody has told you in a long time that God doesn't want you to, to, to hustle and to rebuild your life on a daily basis where you can't partake of it. Because what the scripture is saying, they plant these vineyards and God is saying he wants you to live long enough to go through the aging process of the grape. So that all of what you have labored for and planted, God says, I want you to sit around the table and sip your wine. Enjoy the fruit of your labor. So for those of you who think that God just wants to, for you to work hard and work hard and just pass it on to the next generation and you die and go to, 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 to heaven, that's not what the scripture is saying. He says, I want you to plant, so you have to do your part. He says, you have to rebuild. He says, watch this, I will bring my people Israel back from exile and they will rebuild. He didn't say, I will rebuild. <laughs> he didn't say, I am going to rebuild the things that ruined you. He said, you will. You will take ownership of your destiny. You can't go back and fix all the years you made dumb mistakes and decisions. But God says now that you're in a new season, a season of transition, here's what I want you to do. I, I'm bringing you back from exile. I'm bringing you back to, to the place, watch this, that you've been robbed, the dignity as a young lady, the dignity as a woman, and, 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 and just the, 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 the boldness and the strength as a man. I'm bringing you back to that place because you lost it. And then I'm going to use you to rebuild. I want you to rebuild your life. I want you to take ownership of your destiny. I want you to decide that you deserve better. I want you to decide that this is not all that God has for you. I want you to decide that you're going to work and you're going to plant, you're going to cultivate, you're going to come up with an idea and you're going to put it to work. And I want you to sit down one day after you have labored and I want you to sip from your labor. I want you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. You see, the greatest need in our lives today as has very little to do with our wants and more to do with getting back into the will of God, the perfect will of God. And that is God is saying, I'm bringing you back from exile. I'm bringing you back to a place where I want you to repair yourself. I want you to become your best self. I want you to recover from the losses you've had. I want you to recover from the brokenness that you have experienced because all of us, we need to be restored to the image of how God sees us. The word restore means to bring back or to return to its former condition, place or position. So in the context of today's message, you must understand that God wants you restored. If you can get that in your spirit, that God wants you restored, you will no longer settle for average. You will no longer walking around having a pity party blaming everybody for the drama that you've experienced in your lifetime. Because God wants you to get back into your original state, your original condition, 
your original position, the one that he has designed for you. He wants you to get back to that place. And you're not there. Maybe you're on your way there, but you're not there. And, and, and he's not pleased with how you have settled for average. That's not how he has created you. That's not who he has created you to be. Not to be an average person. We all fall down. We all get knocked down. But what are you going to do after you've been knocked down? He wants you to pick the broken pieces of your life. And though you have been messed up, though you don't have it all together, God is restoring you. And that's why he sent me here today to tell you he's restoring you. As broken as you are mentally, emotionally, God says, I'm restoring you. I'm using the brokenness of your life. All of the issues that you've been through, I'm using it to put you back together again. Oh, I don't know who this word is for this morning. He wants you to get back into the original state that he created you to be. God wants to bring you back from exile, the place you have been robbed and denied the opportunity to thrive and access his blessings. Let's look at Amos 9, 14 again, because it, it, it spoke volume to me. The word of the Lord says, and I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild. Somebody say, I will rebuild. Come on, you ought to say it more convincingly, man. <laughs> say it again, I will, I will rebuild. That's the word of the Lord. The Lord says they will rebuild the ruined cities, the ruined cities. Most of you, if you walk around and you look in your life right now, there's a lot of things that were ruined. Your pride, your dignity, your love, your heart. You've been in relationships that have ruined you, broken you, your family. There's a lot of drama in the family. There's a lot of issues that you've gone through. When you look at your life, it's been ruined by people you trusted. It's been ruined by the job that you're on. It's been ruined, unfortunately, even by the church you attend or once attended. Every one of us have had experiences where our lives have been ruined, but according to the word of God, it says here, they will plant vineyards. Here's the question I have for you today. What are you planting? What are you planting? What are you planting? Bitterness? Anger? Rage? Playing the blame game? He did that to me. She did this to me. How long have you left that person? It's been five years. It's been 10 years. They're no longer in your life. You left that dude long time ago. Yeah, I know he damaged you, but he's gone. Can't you see? He posted on Facebook. He's with another woman. Get on with your life. Oh, they're not ready for this, man. Get on with your life. Rebuild your life. Rebuild your life. I'm telling you, God is a God who specializes in bringing broken pieces together. And honey, let me tell you something. When you allow God to build your life up, all the naysayers, all the people who wish you bad will step back and look at you and can't believe that God did all of those things in your life. God knows how to repair you. There's a lot of people right now who hate your guts, but they're following you. They're watching you. And ain't nothing like a hater watching God bless you. Oh, glory to God, man. That every day he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Every day they're just picking up the phone and they're just watching you getting blessed. 
They're just watching God prosper you for all the evil they intended for you to have. God just turned it around for your good. Am I talking to anybody in this building? And those of you are screaming. The truth is, right now, you are not a true reflection of what God created you to be. You're not. Therefore, you're not functioning at your best self and at full capacity in your assignment, in your assignment. You have an assignment to rebuild. I don't know who I'm talking to. You've been ruined. You've been ripped apart. But you have a duty to rebuild. That's your assignment. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Get your act together. It's time to rebuild. You have an assignment to plant. You have an assignment to invest. You have an assignment to be creative. You have an assignment to work things out so that later you can benefit from the efforts that you put in today. All throughout your life, a lot has happened. A lot has happened to you. And instead of maturing and gaining, you have lost your identity your dignity, your joy, your peace, your purpose, and sadly, your relevance. There are many of you streaming right now, and you're in this building. Let's tell the truth. You're not happy. You're not. You're not fully satisfied with life and you're pretending. And God doesn't get excited when we function under false pretense. You've lost your relevance. You are just existing. You're just functioning every day. You get up, you go through the routine. When there's an assignment, there are vineyards to plant. There are wineries to take care of. There's a transition that God is trying to activate in you. There are things that God wants to do because when you go through the process, he wants you to taste and see the fine wine that he has created through your life. But you're sitting there and you're pretending. You've lost your joy. You have lost your dignity. You have lost your peace, your sense of purpose, and your relevance. God sent you to impact people. There are people in your inner circle that he sent directly to you to be impacted by you. Whether it is in family, whether it's in, in business. Don't you know many of you have got some deep business ideas in you, but because you've been ruined mentally and emotionally, you are not out there doing what God has called you to do. So therefore, you've lost your relevance. You don't even impact anybody, any sector of society anymore. Because you're no longer pushing. You're no longer believing. You're not, no longer believing that you can recover from the damage. Maybe it's because of the people you're hanging out with. Maybe the people that you're hanging out with are not pushing you from exile. Maybe they're not pushing you into your purpose. Maybe they are reminding you of your brokenness, your dysfunction. Maybe they're reminding you of your pain and your losses. But you have very few people in your life who are there to push you, to let you understand that God wants you to make gardens yes, yes. where you can eat from. Yes. On this earth yes. that you can partake of, that you can benefit from. And for these reasons, 
I need you to understand that God is restoring you. And listen to me, for those of you who are living a shameful life all these years, God sent me here today to tell you, stop it. Stop it. I don't care what you've been through. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Everything that you've been through, God is using it to restore you. <laughs> Isaiah 61 verse 7, it says, instead of your shame, listen carefully now, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. <laughs> instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Who told you that you can't be blessed after brokenness? Who tells you that God can't give you more than what you've lost? Come on now. He said, I will give you double portion. I don't know if there's anybody who's ready to receive double portion in 2022. <laughs> double. And instead of disgrace, you'll rejoice in your inheritance. Didn't we talk about peace and joy and happiness a moment ago? Instead of disgrace. The truth is, so many of you out there, you're so worried about what people think and say about you. That, that, that it, is, it has prohibited you from embracing what God is saying. God says, you're going to rejoice. You're going to rejoice and then he says, and so will you inherit a double portion. It, he's talking double again, a double portion in your land, the land that you've been planting gardens, the land that you've been planting vineyards. The very thing that you tried that failed and you're like, oh, oh, I ain't going to try it again. It never worked. God is saying, I'm restoring you for you to rebuild. Because just... <laughs> Sometimes what you need to understand, my friends, it is that sometimes the reason why certain things didn't work, it's not that it wasn't the will of God. Watch this. It's not that it wasn't the right season. It's just that you weren't doing it God's way. I have Bible to prove it. Remember when Peter was in the boat? And the Bible says Peter was fishing all night. He was fishing, man. He was fishing. And they had a net, right? And they threw the net on the left side of the boat. Because all night they were fishing on the left. Same water, same environment. They had a net. They had all the tools. But they were over on the left side. They got tired frustrated like us you tried something over and over it doesn't work they pack up folding their nets jesus met them hey what's up brothers what's what, what are you doing okay we didn't catch anything jesus said come back come back come back and i could just imagine they're thinking ain't no fish in that water ain't no breakthrough there we tried it you just came on the scene We've been at it all night. On, sir. I'm telling you, we threw the net down. Ain't no fish in that water. It's amazing how many of you will say ain't nothing good can come out of certain things when a stranger can come and get blessed. Jesus said, no, throw your net on the other side. Sometimes we're just doing things the wrong way. Sometimes our trust and our faith has just been cast into the wrong things. Jesus said, throw it on the other side. The moment they did, double portion. The moment they threw the net on the right side, all of a sudden they're pulling up, they're pulling up, and when they got enough fish in the net, 
they had to scream out to other fishermen, we can't keep all of this fish, come get some. How would you like God to bless you so much? You have to call your neighbor, your cousin, your uncle, family members, come get some of this blessing that God is pouring into my life. Am I talking to any hungry people here today? Woo, glory to God, man. God wants to give you double. That's his word. So life has a way of hitting us with situations that will leave us broken, distorted, and disfigured. That's true. Meaning that we are not at our best and we're not producing our best God-given abilities. And this is the reason we need to be healed. This is the reason we need to come back to God and rebuild. We do need that. Jeremiah 17, verse 14. I love this. And many of us should be crying this out to God today. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. If you really ask God to restore you, he will. If you stop complaining about what you've been through, if you stop complaining about, well, you tried it, didn't work, and you've been at it for years. And so, no, no. If you just say, Lord, heal my doubts. Amen. Heal my fears. I tell you what, if, if there was ever a fear scan or scanner, you know when you go to the airport and they tell you to stretch your hands out and they go like this. And all of a sudden, beep, 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 beep. Okay, they look, oh, it's your belt and so forth. If I had a fear scanner, I guarantee you over here, it would beep, 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 beep
twisting us, of causing us to feel broken. Just because you see somebody smiling, just because you see somebody dressed up, have makeup on or whatever they've got on, don't you ever for one moment think that life has always been pretty. The difference between us and some of you is simply this. We have made up in our minds, quitting is not an option. Come on, do I have some witnesses here today? That we're gonna fight through life and we're going to take the restoration of God, what he's doing in our lives. I wanna conclude with this today by saying that we're incapable of performing at our best when we continue to function the way we are. And that is ignoring our need to be restored. We won't function at our best self when you don't think you need to rebuild. When you don't think you need to try something differently. I believe I'm sent here today to declare to many of you that God is restoring you and that he's using, watch this, it's, 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 it's really weird. He's using the very things that broke you to restore you. <laughs> One of my favorite stories in the Bible is found in Job 42, and I close with this. <laughs> Job 42, I'll focus on verse 10. Brother Job was not a poor man to say that he was poor and got rich. Job was introduced to us as a wealthy man who had it all together, right? Had it all together. And the Bible says life circumstances confronted him. He lost it all. So for those of you who think misfortune only happened to people who don't have it or who grew up poor, I guess you don't know your Bible. Every one of us, rich or poor, will face some situations in life that will rob us of what we hold on to dearly. Job had it all, had it all. The Bible says one dilemma after the next, and I don't know who I'm talking to. You feel like Job, you get this bad news and when you think it couldn't get worse, you're hit with another news. You're hit with just constant negatives. Job lost it all. He lost his children. He got into a domestic altercation with his wife. A huge disagreement with his wife. Marital problems. Maybe his wife was concerned about him because she was saying, look, ah, look, we had the house, we had the car, the chariots, we had everything. I understand you're laying up on this bed and you sick. We got bills to pay. We lost the kids. What are we gonna do? And you still sitting up in here talking about you trusting God? She's talking like a human being. How long are you gonna sit? We've lost everything. I used to ride high. If I need to go get my nails done, I call for the chariot. Chariot is right there. I know I was living, Job's wife was living good. So when she lost it, it was an argument. Hey, what you gonna do about this? We can't keep living like this. And Job just sitting there, the Lord giveth, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, I trust you. I mean, she was looking at him like, really, dude? 
Why? Here's what she said. Why don't you just curse God, man, and die? You'd be surprised to see the foolishness that comes out of people's mouth when they're stressed. She was stressed. Just curse God and let's just die. In other words, the woman was trying to say, I'd rather die without all the stuff I used to have. I want all them stuff back. And if we can't get it, take me home. <laughs> Job had to rebuke her because he was determined to focus on God. And these are the words, verse 10 declares. After Job had prayed for his friends, the people who were saying, you stupid, you crazy. This God stuff, this church stuff, you crazy, man. What did it, what did it, what did it do for you? You're going to church all these weeks and Sundays and serving God and you, Brother Job, talk about you love God. You're reading your word daily. You're committed to the temple and so forth. You're doing all of that. You stupid. Where's your God? You lost everything. Where's your God? Somebody must have worked witchcraft on you because that ain't normal. It ain't normal for somebody to lose all their possession. Their kids start dying. It, it, oh, that, that ain't normal. That's witchcraft. Job prayed for his friends. What was he praying for? Their faith. Because their faith failed them. There's a lot of people who will only serve God faithfully as long as everything is going right. I believe in my heart, Job, friends, they love God. But you have to face the reality, man. They couldn't understand a loving God allowing them to be raped of all that stuff. So they quit. They quit. But Job, Job said, no, 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 no. I trust my God. He prayed for his friends. Watch this. Those of you who are wishing bad for people, stop it. I'm going to tell you why, because this verse, God revealed something to me. It blew my mind. Be careful of what you're wishing for people, because what you're wishing for people could be the very thing that comes right back and hits you in the face. The Bible says Job prayed for his friends and watch what happens because he prayed for his friends. The Lord restored his fortune, not his friends. The Lord never restored his friends' fortune or their fortunes. Job prayed for his friends and the Bible says the Lord restored his, Job's fortune and gave him twice as much. So if you're hurting right now, if you had, had encountered some losses during COVID, if you've encountered some losses over the years, I don't know what your brokenness is. Maybe you've encountered losses in your love life with your family, relationship between you and your children. Maybe you've suffered losses when it comes to even your finances. I'm telling you, God is restoring you right now. Well, what's your attitude? What is your attitude to what he's taken you through? It is, is it, is it an attitude of, okay, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I don't think this is ever going to work for me. And you start doing your own thing. Or are you going to trust God? Pray for the people who are mocking you, laughing at you. Watch this. Who don't understand the decisions you have made. That was a tough decision for Job. I'm going all the way with God. We're living in a generation now, especially during COVID, 
everybody has their own religion now. Everybody has now redefined God. And you dare not speak out against them. They will attack you. Everybody. Everybody got a voice. Everybody got a word. Everybody. There's, there's more bishops, prophets, and evangelists on Facebook in the history of mankind. No, seriously. We're doing things our way. But I want some people in this room, those who are streaming to embrace the fact that restoration has come to your house. Whew. You are about to drink the wine from your consistency. <laughs> you are about to drink the wine from your faithfulness and trust in God. I got to do this before I let you go. Amen. If you believe that you needed to hear this word that God is restoring you, please don't hesitate. Just come down here. Just come and stand right here. I, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I don't care what your losses are. I wish those of you who are streaming could be here to do the same. But if this message spoke volume to you, I need you to make a comment and say that word was for me. Come get restored. Come get restored. You can get your joy back. You can get your peace back. Come on now. You can everything that you thought you lost, you can get it back. Come on. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. You can get it. You can get it. I, I'm telling you, this is not magic. It's just factual. You can get it. God sent this word today to tell you that he's restoring you. He's rest See yourself with all your brokenness. See yourself, him restoring you. What you thought you lost, no, you actually gained. I don't know who that was for. What you thought you lost, it was for your gain. I prophesy to you today, God's going to give you more than what you lost. I don't know who's ready to receive that. I said, God's going to give you more than what you lost. God in this place today. Ooh. Come on, don't resist it. Don't resist this. Don't resist it. Don't resist it. God is doing something. Come on, come on. God's doing something. He's penetrating the heart right now. Come on, he's penetrating the heart right now. Come on, let it go. 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 Don't be fearful of what you're sensing. I'm telling you. He's breaking you right now. He's breaking you right now. Come on, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you shall recover it all. You shall recover it all. You shall recover it all. Ah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Ah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Ah. My God, my God. Woo. Come on, come on. Let it go, let it go. It's time to reveal. Hey. It's time to reveal. 
my God, my God. Come on. Come on, lift those hands, everybody. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Come on. Congregation, would you stand? Would you stand? Come on. Let's join them. The struggle is over. That's it. That's it. That's it. The struggle. The struggles are all over. Come on. Yeah.
I want you to remember these phrases. <laughs> Listen to me, young lady. I want you to remember these phrases. No more shame. That's number one. No more shame. No more. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Can you imagine how Job felt? One who had it was living his best life and lost it all. No more shame. Let people talk. Just pray for them. Job did not get back at them. He prayed for them. You want to get blessed? Pray for your critics. Pray for them. The second and final thing I want you to remember is simply this. You may not feel it, but it's true. God is restoring you. And I don't know if you've got crazy faith like me, but I do believe in 2022 will be the year of your double. I just believe, I just believe this year. I'm not talking about next year. I don't care how long it took you to lose all the stuff you've lost. I just believe this is the year of your double. This is the year of your increase. This is the year that God's going to multiply it back. Is anybody receiving what I'm saying? This is your year. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you that you spoke to all of us this morning. You reminded us that you brought us back from exile. And you've given us a responsibility to rebuild. You've given us a responsibility to plant and to enjoy the benefits from what we have planted. You have reminded us that even in our brokenness, even though we've been robbed, denied, God, you have blessed us. We're blessed. We're blessed. And that you are restoring us. You did hear all of the cries of your people. The many nights we cried, no one knew. The many days we were screaming, yelling, God, where are you? You heard us. And now you're saying to us, don't worry about who heard us. Don't worry about who talked about us. Don't worry about how it looked like we had a lot of losses. What we hear you say to us, pray for our critics, but get ready to rebuild. Oh, yeah. Glory to God, because you're giving us double. Bless every woman, every man here today, those who are streaming. Thank you for this rhema word. Thank you for giving us hope as we go into another week that we are blessed in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory because you're a good God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give him a praise. For you. Did you get anything from the word of God today? Well, God bless you. Always remember faith in your God will always move mountains out of your life. I love you. I'm praying for you. Go rebuild your lives. God bless you. If you're staying for the prayer service, right after they finish singing, we'll go right into it. So God bless you. Love you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for streaming. God bless you.